We're about to meet a whole team of sporting heroes. England's current amputee football team are the most successful squad in 30 years. It's a unique sport that gives players who have already tackled their fair share of challenges the chance to play the beautiful game again. But to do that in Europe this year, I've had the chance to lift the trophy for England. They need our help. Yeah, so I think it's about time for a kick-off. Shall we meet them? Here Let's we go. It. In comes the team. Yes. Joining us, we've got Jamie. Martin. We've got Reese. Liam. There's TJ. Thomas. Oh, uh, Scott. Scott, the head coach. Yeah, Connor. Uh, Connor's there. Come on in, boys. Come on in. Sean. We've got Sean. We've got Soyfan. Jamie. Is that everybody? We all here? Hello there. Good morning, fellas. Morning, morning. Morning, How morning, are all. you? Thanks How are you doing, Scott? In. Very well, thank you. So? Very, very good indeed. Now, tell me about how these guys all got involved with playing. Well, it's, uh, we have a brilliant league system, uh, mm -hmm. so they all play for the clubs. Uh, yeah. And what we do is we go out as a kind of an England selection group and we select a squad to go and represent the country at major tournaments. Because mm. it's a real lifeline for people, isn't it? Just looking at the football as well, by the way, Kat, this is just... If anybody had some preconceived idea that if you guys were playing football with crutches or with yeah. some sort of limb difference, it would be slow. It's the oh, no. absolute opposite. It's extraordinary. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a brutal game, really. I think people who haven't seen amputee football before might think it's a little bit slow, yeah. going through the motions a little bit, but yeah. in actual fact, it's a very, very fast game, and it's a brutal game, so we have snap crutches regularly. <laughs> Oh, my, you must get through them at a rate of knots, no? Yeah, definitely. Everyone, yeah, yeah. everyone jokes about me because one of mine's really bent. Hold that up for us. So this is Liam's. Can you see the bend in that? Can you see? I mean, I'm not sure they were designed to bend like this. <laughs> no. What happened there, Liam? Uh, probably just someone's Bit tackled rough. me and it's bent, but I've just got used to it now, so... Was, was, that, a, was that during an international fixture or yeah. a domestic fixture? Yeah. It's just happened over a long time, loads of fixtures. Okay. It wasn't a particularly gnarly no. tackle with a Frenchman no. or something oh. like that. Oh. That would have been no. acceptable. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and Liam, how did you get involved with the team? So I found out about amputee football through social media. It was actually our friend Jamie Oakey who sent me a message. I didn't know nothing about the sport, didn't know nothing about amputee right. football and then... He sent me a message and said, why don't you come and try amputee football with mm. us? And I did and just not look back sort of thing. And what happened to you? How did you... How did you I, I was in a road traffic accident when I was right. 20 years old and unfortunately they just couldn't save my leg because it was so badly damaged. But like I said, opportunities like this, you know, mm. I wouldn't it, have got before, so... It must be amazing, actually, to, to find a team like this. It must be a real lifeline for yeah, you. Yeah, definitely, and I think as much as we all love playing football and stuff, you know, it's very rare that we have all these deep conversations about, like, how are you feeling, how did yeah. you lose your leg, but there's just something really special about being around other amputees and... Stuff yeah, like that. yeah. Uh, TJ, talk us through what happened to you because you actually, before you lost your leg, you were you had trials Southampton. You were sort of a, a budding young footballer, potentially looking to play professionally. Yeah. So um, about two weeks before I lost my leg, I had trials with both Portsmouth and Southampton. Um, then went to the local fairground with my mates, mm. and then everything just changed that day. Um, they tried saving my leg for about ten days after the accident, but, and then what happened? So the safety bar on the roller coaster didn't come down on me. So I went round the ride once and then I went round... As the ride stopped, I got out thinking that's the best option for me. Mm. But as I got out, the woodwork snapped. Mm. So I fell through the woodwork and then the roller coaster went. My reaction was, I need to grab the ride. <gasps> but I just didn't let go of the ride and just went round, hit every single pole. Um, my kneecap was in like 3,000 pieces, snapped oh. my femur. So Done a good job on it. You really then, did. Wow. <laughs> but I had the doctors telling me they can save it. I can be back playing football again in like a year's time. And then I was like, I don't think that's true. Right. Um, so about 15, I decided to have it amputated in the hospital and I've not looked back. So, and actually, that's given you the lease of life. And, and, and similarly to Liam, I'd imagine, finding amputee football and finding this team mm. and the opportunity to keep playing has been a, a, an extraordinary thing for you to be able to explore and enjoy. Exactly. So... When I lost my leg, like, amputee football wasn't very publicised or pushed very well. Um, so I didn't know about it for about eight, nine years after losing my leg. And then an old player from England who played for Portsmouth set up the team. Okay. So I was like, oh, I'll go along and give it a try. And then after my first session, it was like, this is what I want to do. And just better think into it. And now here, living that dream, playing yeah. for England. 
You get a little piece of yourself back yeah. as well, I think, yeah. then. Being able to take a four, which we all thrive in. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's really important sport, you know, like, um, I think it gives you something to focus on. And yeah. I was similar to TJ. I spent many years as an amputee not knowing about this sport. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I found myself in difficult situations. Feeling and, a bit lost Yeah, too, yeah. Right? And then since I found football, it's, like, literally changed my life. I mean, we, we don't get paid like professional athletes, but it's literally changed my life, this sport. It's brilliant. It's so great to hear. So you're the outfield player. Thomas, you're the keeper. Yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> right. So there is... A, but, that, but, that, but the irony He's being... so that, mischievous. That, but, but the keeper... Can't, you can't play in goal if you've got two hands or two yeah. arms, is that the thing? Yeah, so everyone else is like a lower leg deficiency as they've all lost their legs um, and I lost my arm, but I lost both to be fair, uh, but I was just born with it, so I, right, didn't, okay. I didn't go through like all the trauma of like an accident or something like that, which I was quite lucky, I think. Uh, but yeah, so I'm an am uh, arm amputee, so arm amputee's playing net, um, so it just obviously just use one hand. Normally keepers got both, have both gloves on. Yeah. I've yeah. only got one glove on, um, so it kind of levels the playing field. Do you get them a half price? Can you, can you spin <laughs> uh, <them>? no, uh, <laughs> I, I don't quite get them half price, but I mean, uh, the deal's a deal, the way it is. But so, actually, they always go for yeah. this side, don't yeah. they, when they're trying uh, to score? The smart strikers will say, like, you know what, just put the ball to the side, doesn't have an arm, and that'll be the smart way about things. But I think it's got to a point where you learn that, and I think you've all got to really like, overcome it and like adapt through it, like through training, and you've got to like, yeah. go that side. And yeah. I think strikers because now I know that I can get to both sides anyway. So. I think if you, look at, if you look at professional goalkeepers as well, and I've played enough of these big games with some of those, like Dave Seaman always says, you learn to turn and, and use the opposite yeah. hand sometimes. Well, it's instinct, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Through training and stuff like that, I mean, it's become something that I'm very much used to. I mean, I'm more than happy for a ball to go that side and I'll hopefully get after that. Yeah, too. Uh, but yeah, I mean, strikers are definitely going to aim for that side, but I think it's better than mindset. Still can't get past. <laughs> you've got, you've got to know about that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Scott, look at this trophy, this extraordinary trophy. Yep. So this is a trophy that you guys won recently. Tell us what it is. So we went and played in the uh, the first ever Nations League competition back in June. Mm. Um, we played against Turkey, who haven't been beat since 2014, and a world and European champion. Uh, we played Spain, who knocked us out of the European Championships. Yeah. And we played uh, Poland, who have professional leagues. They're incredible, really? lots and lots of funding. We beat all three yeah. to, to bring the trophy on. So it's our first major trophy in 34 years. So basically, if we can get you guys to the Euros, you stand a really good chance. Right? And you're taking it seriously. You've got, like, nutritionists and physios. Like, you're on it. Oh, without a shadow of a doubt. I mean, everybody here has got jobs or they're in full-time education. Yeah. Um, uh, but the expectation and demand is exactly the same as Serena Wiegmann or Gareth Southgate squads. Where they've got nutritionists, they've all got bespoke plans, we've got strength and conditioning coaches, doctors, but every single person that works for the England Amputee Football Association mm. is a volunteer. Brilliant. So how much do you need to get to the Euros? So, yeah, we find ourselves in a difficult situation because we're seeded number one for that tournament. <gasps> There's a real good chance of us winning. You've got to get there. We You've need, got to get yeah, there. We need £30,000 to get us to the tournament, but... The pitch is bigger than that. We're looking for somebody to come in and fall in love with amputee football like we all have yeah. Yeah. and really start to go on the journey with us and, and take us to the next level. Rich. And you've got a GoFundMe page, right? We, yeah, we launched a GoFundMe page about a month ago. Uh, right. and we're up to about £9,000 now, but right. our magic number is 30. But like I say, that's to get us to the tournament. Yes. There's a bigger picture there as well. And it's a huge launch pad as well, though, Thomas. You might not have had the trauma that some of these boys have had in, in, in facing what you have, but the difference that it makes for you as somebody who has a limb difference to play in a team. Just explain a little bit about that and, and why that's important for young boys and girls that look at you guys as well. Yeah. Mm. I think it's definitely the sense of, like, your, your pride representing your country at the end of the day. Um, I think when I was growing up, I didn't really understand, like, mm. from my life, like, I wouldn't be able to play like mainstream football and stuff like that. But the fact that I'm now representing England at World Cups and major tournaments, and I mean, it's a sense of pride knowing the fact that there's many people in like worse situations than us guys that haven't quite achieved what we have. Uh, which is one thing we can be really proud of, the fact that there's obviously stuff that should should hold us back, like classes of disability, uh, but we've quite we've went away and achieved some really good things. So oh, days, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Something that the the, 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 the the senior team would kill for, yeah, yeah, yeah. to lift the trophy. <laughs> so we're all desperately hoping they're going to do. And Liam, you've got a son as well. Now you've yeah. got children. Yeah. What's it like being yeah. able to represent? I mean. I've been lucky enough in representative games in a charity match to wear an England shirt, and yeah. there's nothing like that feeling, but you actually play for England. Yeah, so, well, yeah. my son Liam Jr. is only nine, and he looks at some of these lads as most kids look at, like, Ronaldo and Messi, do you know what I mean? And uh, Thomas is actually his favourite player, I don't know. <laughs> really? Why. Yeah. Aww. Yeah, but, like, it, all the lads are amazing with my kids, and, like, when they turn up, we're in the car on the way to football, and Liam Jr.'s like, is Jacko going to be there? Is Reese going to be there? And then when we get there, he's just silent and doesn't say anything. Oh, just that starstruck. And you've been recognised on holiday, haven't you? 
me. Yeah, were you it recognised? Was Thomas. Was it Thomas? You got yeah. recognised. Yeah. yeah, that was class. I mean, for like class. the exposure of the. St- <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> for like the exposure of like, obviously, football was getting so much bigger. There's so many eyes coming towards it, and like, I never thought that like someone would recognise me were in like a foreign country. Uh, and then it came to a point where like people know who we are. And I mean, like, we've all getting like all sorts of views on social media and stuff like that nowadays, and it's incredible. And I think the sky's the limit, really. And someone, can, kids came up and asked for a, for a photograph with you. Yeah, I was on holiday with my parents, oh. and like they said, like, oh, there's people want a photo with you. And I was like, what's this? I'll see you on YouTube. And I was like, whoa, like I've never experienced. <laughs> You're an influencer now. No, I'm not quite. I'm not quite, <laughs> I'm not quite. I'm not quite. I'll leave that to the other people. But I mean, it's a surreal experience, and I've, it's like I've only got like a little like bite-sized bit of it. Yeah. But, yeah. But I think, there's, such still, an important I think bit. there's still a massive way to go in England with amputee yeah. football. But if you look at what winning the Euros did for the women's yes. game, oh, I yeah. think we're in prime position to go and win this tournament. Yeah. You know and I mean? you so, can, just from yeah. chatting with Scott, you yeah. can do it. You need 30 grand to be able to do it. We're going to give you the 1,000 quid yeah, as well. Yeah, straight in. So, that's, so that's on the way to... I think this is a movie waiting to happen too. Oh, yeah. Don't you think? We were actually discussing game. that in Netflix documentary before. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that would be brilliant. <laughs> Netflix, Absolutely. get on the phone right now. It's a silver screen that do Drive to Survive. Yeah. Or let's see if it's a movie. Escape you can all. You can all decide who plays who. Who's going to play? He plays himself, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> He's class, he, he played himself. He, he would. <laughs> You've been talking about yourself in the third person as well, Tom. Uh, I love it. Thank you so much thank for coming in. Thank you for coming. Uh, we'll Absolutely. keep an eye on that page, Smashing. and fingers crossed we get you there. But we'll like get. you say, Scott, it's bigger than that. And actually, it's not just about this tournament. It's about a broader, bigger launch pad for amputee football here in the UK. Yeah, absolutely. Amazing. Brilliant. Thank Thanks you for coming. For coming. No, thank, thank you. Good stuff. Enough.